What is going on everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here. And before we get into this video, I know I am the absolute worst and I told you that this video is going to be coming out on Monday. Now, let me tell you one thing. Walmart will work you into the ground, ladies and gentlemen. I will tell you that right now. I love my job at Walmart. I love being employed. Obviously, there's that two-month stint from your boy where he was unemployed and he was looking for employment and Walmart picked your boy up and employed him, but 40 hours a week at Walmart will drain you the second you come home, and when you finally fall asleep, you really don't want to wake up in the morning to make a video. But we're finding our passion, we're finding our footing, and one video a week still is doing better than how your boy was doing in the past during that time. But I promise this video is going to be great because we are talking about my favorite team, your favorite team, and your mom's favorite team, the Jacksonville Jaguars, and we're talking about the important thing, the important thing of the 2020 season, and that is how many wins will the Jacksonville Jaguars have in 2020? Now, in order to address how many wins the Jaguars will have in the 2020 season, we have to address a couple of things. We need to address how the offense will fare, how the defense will fare, and the overall schedule. So those are three things that we are going to be going over in this video. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, this is how many wins will the Jacksonville Jaguars have in 2020? So first off, let us address the offensive side of the ball. And this is a side of the ball that expert analysis and people around the league, I think, are just not giving the Jacksonville Jaguars enough credit for. You know, you look around and you see, you know, people giving the Jags a 2-14 and record. You see the Jags tanking for Trevor Lawrence. And if the Jags go 2-14, and 3-13, and I don't think it's going to be the fault of the offense. I see it being the fault of the defense giving up a lot of points, but of course we're going to talk about that more when we address the defensive side of the ball. As far as the offense goes, I think there is a lot of promise here as long as everyone stays healthy. As far as the skill position goes, as far as the running back wide receivers go, I think there's a lot of talent there and a lot of depth at those positions where there is a ton of room for the Jaguars to be really successful, especially at the wide receiver position. The wide receiver position is the deepest room for the Jaguars heading into 2020. If you guys did not see my podcast with Jason from Jaguars United, go ahead and check that out. The link will be in the description below. But we addressed the wide receiver position in that video, and he said that that was one of the biggest weaknesses for the Jaguars heading into next season, or this season, excuse me. And I have to disagree. I think that this is one of the most exciting wide receiver rooms that the Jaguars have had in a really long time. And you've seen, you know, Keenan McCardell and guys like Chris Conley, who's, you know, the most tenured guy of this group, say that this is, you know, a really talented young wide receiver group that has all the potential in the world. You look at guys like Colin Johnson, LaVishka Chennault. You know, Colin Johnson hasn't been getting talked about a lot because I think the potential of Chennault is just insane. You've seen, if you haven't seen some of the training camp videos um, of Chennault, I suggest you go try and check those out. I'll try and put some of them in the B-roll in this video. And uh, credit to Demetrius Johnson, John Shipley as well. Um, they have been doing an excellent job covering Jaguars training camp for all of us that uh, obviously can't be there. And, you know, it's just been it's been fun to watch LaVishka's, like, development and seeing exactly what he can do and what he can bring to the table for the Jacksonville Jaguars. This young wide receiver is a guy that, you know, last year was projected to be a first-round pick, obviously got injured, and this year, you know, fell to the second round. The Jaguars have a, a history of of picking up these kind of players, you know, with injury issues in, you know, later rounds in the draft that end up being really, really big steals, you know, whether they sign them back or whether they end up working or not, you know, that, that's a different story, but the players themselves always end up balling out and playing well. Guys like Miles Jack, Miles Jack was a first round talent. He ended up falling to us in the second round and he, without a doubt, is a great piece to this Jacksonville Jaguar defense. And LaVishka Chenault, I think, could be a really, really great piece to this Jaguar wide receiver room. And I think is a guy that 
you know, defenses are going to have to game plan for. And a guy that I think a lot of defenses early on in the season are really going to struggle against because they don't really know what they're getting with him right away. You know, obviously with these training camps being closed off, they really don't know what they're going to be getting with this rookie receiver. There's been no preseason, so you really don't know what you're going to get with this kid against, you know, a live NFL defense. But I think when, you know, push comes to shove, when the season begins, this is going to be a kid that's going to be an absolute unit and an absolute problem that NFL defenses are going to have to game plan for and, you know, really adjust and really have to plan to, you know, stop LaVisca Chenault. And, you know, it's going to be it's going to be a big deal for him. And then that's not even, a, you know, talking about guys like DJ Chark. DJ Chark, who is expected to be the Jaguars' number one wide receiver, obviously. Chark is going to have another big season. My only worry is is if Chark has to go up against guys, you know, that are elite-level cornerbacks. I think, you know, when he has to get locked up by guys that are true number one corners in the NFL, you know, guys that are top ten corners in the league, I think that's going to be some struggles. That's going to be... You know, that's going to be when DJ Chark's going to have to, you know, either prove himself or that's going to be when, you know, other guys in this wide receiver room are going to have to step up and really become factors into this wide receiver room. Guys like D.D. Westbrook, Keelan Cole, and, you know, that's not even mentioning them uh, so far because, you know, you talk about the exciting ability of LaVisha Chanel and you talk about the number one wide receiver possibility of DJ Chark. You also got guys like D.D. Westbrook in the slot. You got guys like Keelan Cole with his big catch ability and Colin Johnson as well. And, you know, the list goes on with these wide receivers. I mean, there's truly a lot of guys here that Gardner Minshew has to pick from to throw the ball to. And truly a lot of guys that can make big plays either with the ball in their hand or after the catch. I mean, these wide receivers truly are going to be a difference maker for the Jaguars next year, and that's not even including the tight ends as well. Let's talk about the tight ends a little bit. Josh Oliver. Josh Oliver, man, got injured again. Broke his ankle or something. A broken bone in his ankle has to get surgery. Josh Oliver, non-factor. I just thought that was funny. I think Josh Oliver is probably the biggest Jaguars meme of all time because he just keeps getting injured, getting injured. Like, I don't even know if this boy's a real player. Is he a real player? I don't know. You know, he's still going to probably come into Madden with, like, a 75 overall, but, like, for what reason? You know what I mean? I don't think, you know, Josh Oliver, hashtag biggest meme of the Jaguars of all time. But you also got some really good pass catchers at this tight end position. James O'Shaughnessy, who built really good chemistry with Gardner Minshew before he got injured, who I think is going to be another really great factor to this offense. And then you got the great free agency signing of Tyler Eifer, who if he can stay healthy, knock on some wood, he is going to be another great addition to this pass catcher room that the Jaguars already have at the wide receiver position. I think Gardner Minshew has ton, ton of targets really just eyeing him down all across the field. You know, from deep in the depth chart, like Keelan Cole, D.D. Westbrook, who it's crazy that those guys, you know, are kind of becoming lower tier to guys that are going to be big playmakers. DJ Chark, Levin Shishanol, Colin Johnson. I think he has guys that are vertical threats and guys that can just do it after the catch and guys that are just reliable. Chris Conley as well. I mean, Chris Conley, man, that's going to be the most reliable receiver that the Jaguars have next year. And it's a guy that doesn't get a lot of respect, you know, not only by the media, but like, by anybody. I mean, he's an 800-yard receiver, and he was good in Kansas City as well, and then when he came to Jacksonville, I mean, no one really gave him any credit. He got 800 yards last year with Gardner Minshew and Nick Foles, and, you know, it goes under the radar. He's definitely a leader of this wide receiver group. It shows, you know, in his press conferences, you know, it shows on the field. The guys look up to this guy, you know, listens to what he has to say, and I think Chris Conley is another big impact player for the Jaguars next year as far as being a pass catcher goes. So these wide receivers and these tight ends, man, I think are going to be huge. And they're going to be really, really, really reliable targets for Gardner Minshew. And that's not even mentioning now the running backs. We're going to go talk about the running backs here, and especially in Jay Gruden's system. I think these wide receivers fit Jay Gruden's system. I think these running backs fit Jay Gruden's system even more. Um, if the play-action game becomes a factor like how it has been in past Jay Gruden you know, systems, and you, looked at, you look at what Gardner Minshew was able to do in the play-action game, you know, last year without Jay Gruden. I mean, it was insane. He put up insane numbers in the play-action game. 
and that is just something that he's going to continue to do if that's something that they call often. And Leonard Fournette, man, great in pass block, you know, blitz pickup, great. He improved tremendously being a pass catching back that no one talks about. Uh, he led the he either led the Jags and he led the Jags in receptions last year or something crazy like that, or targets or something like he he was a great pass catching running back last year. Something that the media doesn't talk about, but he was a good pass catching running back last year, and that's something that he's gonna build upon this year. And he also is on a contract year. This is a guy that wants to win. It's a guy that is a hard runner, and he's gonna continue to get better. I think Leonard Fournette is a underrated piece of this Jaguar offense, but it's somebody that a lot of people know is a part of this Jaguars offense, but it's somebody that I still think doesn't really, you know, get talked about. You know, you look about the Jags media, you look at what the Jags have, and you, you know, you think about these wide receivers, you know, that the potential's there, but you look at Leonard Fournette as well. I mean, he's entering a contract year. He's going to have to run hard. He's going to have to get that new contract, and it's a guy that is very competitive, a guy that really wants to win. And Leonard Fournette, I think, can do the damn thing and play really well. He also got to, he also has a guy underneath him that has been a part of a Jay Gruden system before in Chris Thompson. I think Chris Thompson is going to low-key be a really good acquisition for this Jaguars offense as well. I think Chris Thompson and Leonard Fournette is going to be a really good one-two punch in this Jay Gruden offense and is going to continue to develop this offense to be, you know, exceptionally well and, you know, continue to be probably the best Jags offense that we have seen in a really long time. They're going to put touchdowns on the board, and it's going to be fun. And hopefully we don't have to see Josh Lambeau as many times as we're used to seeing him because we're going to be putting touchdowns on the board instead of kicking field goals. Now let's talk about Gardner Minshew. Gardner Minshew, man, he's looking great in training camp. You guys know how I feel about him. I'm not going to go too in-depth about it because I think he's going to be the Jaguars franchise quarterback. And I think they found their ja- the franchise quarterback in Gardner freaking Minshew. And I think he's going to be able to get the job done. And I don't think that th- there's any possible way that an offense led by Gardner Minshew is going to do as bad to get the number one overall pick. I just don't. I don't see it. Gardner Minshew is going to be able to lead this team to be a great team on the offensive side of the ball. So this offense, I think, doesn't have really anything to worry about. And this offense is going to ball out in 2020, and it's going to be the best side of the ball for the Jaguars next year. Now let's talk about the defensive side of the ball. And this is where things get a little bit more tricky for the Jaguars next year. This is a unit that used to be, obviously, the biggest strength of the Jaguars. Now I think it has become the weakness of the Jaguars, but not too much. I think there are some undoubtable leaders for the Jaguars and some guys that I think, you know, should bring some excitement for the Jaguars next year. I think the defensive line is definitely, you know, a step down from what it used to be, but there are still some guys there that can make some plays. Obviously, you don't got guys like Calais Campbell, Yannick Ngakwe probably won't play, and, you know, you got all the guys that opted out. And, you know, guys like Ronnie Gunter, who had to retire, you know, best hopes to him with his health issues as well. But, you know, you got some veterans up there, you know, guys like Avery Jones, Josh Allen. You know, Josh Allen isn't a veteran, but you got Avery Jones up there. You got Josh Allen up there, Clavon Chase on. You know, you got you got some guys to be excited for on the defensive line for sure. I think Josh Allen is going to be exciting to watch in year two. And I think his development is going to be, you know, something to keep your eye on all year long. And something that everybody should be excited about. The secondary is extremely, extremely young. And something that is going to be, you know, either a really good... eh, Being a really good group is something to be very bold to say. It's either going to be a really, really bad group or a really, really mediocre group. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. I think that, you know, CJ Henderson has a lot of potential to be a really good cornerback in this league. I mean, you look at some of his film from training camp, you see what he has been able to do with against guys like DJ Chark. I mean, DJ Chark obviously is a number one corner. I mean, a number one wide receiver. But you see what I said earlier about DJ Chark being a guy that will struggle against guys you know, that are true number one corners. So, I mean, obviously, if C.J. Henderson is doing that well against Chark and, like, team drills, then C.J. Henderson might just be, you know, that real deal. But he's still young. You know, he's still a rookie heading into his rookie season. 
So, you know, the ceiling is not, you know, it's hard to say that's that high, but I mean, you look back at a guy like Jalen Ramsey, and Jalen Ramsey had a very successful rookie season and a really great year, too. You know, hopefully we can see the same for, you know, C.J. Henderson. And then you look at Trey Herndon on the other outside corner, who I think, you know, made some strides last year to be a really solid uh, outside corner towards the end of last year. But, you know, this year, hopefully, you know, he's put in that work and he can be, you know, a great outside corner again. D.J. Hayden, I think, is always solid in the slot. And then you got Ronnie Harrison and Jared Wilson as at the safety position, and that's just... Yeah, it's either going to be good or bad. You know, that's what I'm saying. It's a secondary and the defensive line for me. I mean, it's either going to be a really all right group or a really bad group. I mean, it's just hard. That's what I don't get to. It's like you look at people breaking down the Jaguars 2020 season and they really focus on the offensive side of the ball and they really don't focus on the defensive side of the ball. If I was an elite expert analyst and I worked for ESPN and I was breaking down the Jaguars season, I would really focus on the defensive side of the ball because, you know, you're losing Calais Campbell this year and you don't got that veteran leadership and that is a big, big, big part of your defense. You know, you don't got Jalen Ramsey, A.J. Boye, also, big blows to your defense, but they never really mention that. They always say, oh, they don't got Nick Foles. They don't got Blake Bortles. Mm, Gardner Minshew. Mm. You know, that's why I never understand. They always talk about our offense, never really the defense. But I think the defense is really where the job wires are going to struggle um, as far as the secondary and the defensive line goes. But as far as the linebackers go, though, I think they you got two really solid leaders on that linebacking core that I think are going to really bring the whole morale of the defense up. Miles Jack and Joe Schobert. Joe Schobert, I think, is going to go down as one of those free... Because the Jags always have one of those. I think one every, you know, three, four years, they have a free agency signing that really, really ends up making this team better and really ends up making this team something special. And I think that's what Joe Schobert's going to be. I mean, he's already shown it in training camp. He wants to be a leader. He's a true middle linebacker, and I think he can get that job done for the Jaguars as a middle linebacker. I really think he can. And he's going to do that thing. Miles Jack's going back to, you know, kind of his natural position as a strong side linebacker. And, you know, that other linebacker spot, I think, as of right now, is kind of up for grabs. Um, You might see Clavon Chase on playing that a little bit. But this defense, I think, is going to be, you know, the weak spot for the Jags. You know, hopefully guys like Josh Allen, Chase On, Avery Jones, Taven Bryan as well, and, you know, C.J. Henderson, Trey Herndon, you know, some, some of these guys step up. But this defense, man, this is going to be where it counts for the Jaguars next year. If they can, you know, allow teams less than 20 points a game, then, you know, that's going to be the big deal for the Jags heading in to 2020. Now, to cap off the Jaguars' 2020 season, we got to talk about the schedule. I think early on, the Jaguars have a really favorable schedule at the beginning of the season. Obviously, they take on the Colts at home to start off the season. I think that's a good Week 1 opponent, and then they go at Tennessee with no fans in Tennessee, and then they play on Thursday night um, against Miami at home, and then they play Cincinnati. That's a Joe Burrow-led team, and then they play at Houston, and then they play Detroit at home. I think that's a really good six-game stretch before the bye week. I'm not going to say that the Jaguars are going to win every single game before the bye week, but I have a really good chance. Those are all They all look like winnable games for the Jaguars. Obviously, the divisional games are tough. Having three divisional games before the bye week is very tough as well. And then, you know, after that, it gets really hard. After the bye week, that is the ringer. That is the stretch for the Jaguars that they're going to have to face. Obviously, the L.A. Chargers, I think that's going to be... I don't really think the Chargers are going to be that great of a team next year. And then they go against Houston um, for the second time. And then after that, man, they play Green Bay, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Minnesota, Tennessee for the second time, Baltimore, Chicago, and Indianapolis. So they close and end their season against Indianapolis. That second half of the schedule is going to be very, very difficult for the Jacksonville Jaguars. However, I don't think that schedule is difficult enough to pin the Jaguars at a 2-14 and record. I think that's absolutely ridiculous. I don't think that this is bad enough for the Jaguars to be the worst team in the NFL next year. I think that's absolutely ridiculous. I think that what the Jaguars have on offense is more than enough to get them 
at least six wins. I'm going to say the Jacksonville Jaguars next year will go seven and nine. I think the Jacksonville Jaguars will still have a losing record, but go seven and nine, and that is a step up. And I think that earns Gardner Minshew the right to be the starting quarterback for the Jacksonville Jaguars. I think that that will show some holes for the Jags, mostly on the defensive side of the ball, and hopefully the Jaguars make the right moves and they are able to sign the right guys back to make sure that this team is successful in 2021. I think they missed the playoffs next year, finished third or second in the division with a 7-9 and nine record because I don't think the AFC South is going to be that great. And they improve upon last year, you know, a one-game difference from how they were last year, going 7-9 and nine, um, on the season, just one game before going 500. That is about as optimistic as I can be. I'm not going to say the Jags are going to go 10-6, and 11-5. I think that's going to be just too much, too ludicrous. And I think 7-9 and nine is about the mark for the Jacksonville Jaguars, especially after the bye week. I think the bye week is going to be the stretch. The Jags are going to have to win a lot of those games before the bye. You know, if they win four or five, man, that, whoo, that is going to be coming up, bro. That is what, you know, they can't end up 5-11, and 11, but that is going to be... You know, that's going to be the show. Hopefully they can put something together. But I'm going to say the Jaguars finished the 2020 campaign with a 7-9 and nine record. Let me know what you think the Jaguars are going to be in the comment section down below. And that was, how many wins will the Jaguars have in 2020? What did you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, you can check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Troop Talks. Or follow me on Instagram, at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, don't forget, you can hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop a new video one time a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Those are just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.